Hey creative people, today inspired by Brockhampton's new album and some of their thermal camera things in their videos, we're going to create this thermal camera effect on your videos in HitFilm Express. Today's video tutorial will be 3 out of 5 on the difficulty scale, it should be an intermediate tutorial. And before we begin, make sure to subscribe to my channel Shiny Films if you haven't already. I make hit film tutorials like this as well as other video editing tutorials and you can follow me on Twitter as well. But let's get straight on into the tutorial. Of course, for Brockhampton's videos, they probably used a real thermal camera to record their stuff. But we don't have thermal cameras, so we're going to try to replicate it in the same way that this album artwork, as you can see, uh, has replicated it. And we can actually use this to help us with replicating it. If you want to download this image, you can just search up for Iridescence album art and you could find this image which we'll actually be using to grab the colors from to use in our thermal camera effect. And then you're also going to need your clip. Now your clip is up totally up to you. The best thing to have is a dark background, but as you can see I've got a light sky background so we're going to have to adjust that later but I'll show you how to do that. And as you can see we've got some quite harsh shadows, not too harsh, but you want to have a really nice soft face because if you have harsh shadows on the face you're going to get cold areas on the face and that's not what you want. You want the whole skin to be warm looking. And so you want to have generally pretty soft lighting and if possible a darker background. But let's get straight on into the tutorial. We're just going to grab uh, the, our clip and we're just going to drag it into the timeline on the first video layer like so. Now we're going to apply our one effect which should do it for us and it's called the color cycle effect. Just go into the effects panel and search up for it. Should so show up here. Or is a color cycle and it's available in the express version of HitFilm as well. So no need to buy add-ons or get the pro version. Here we've got our color cycle effect. You can see it's already applied some, some stuff for us. We've got a pink background, a pink sky, pink faces, and we've got some blue areas as well. So to see what this color cycle does, let's open it up and take a look. The color cycle effect works by creating a cycle of colors. You can think of it like a gradient, but color cycle is a good way to look at it. A cycle of colors and it applies it over different by default luminance values over your image. And you can select what it applies the color cycle over on this input phase. As you can see here, we phase it from luminance at the beginning. And what this means is that darker areas will be a different color to lighter areas. You can also phase shift and everything, but for now, you probably leave it on luminance. You could also change it to something like red, and for example, this will phase how much red there is in the image. This is also really useful, and you might want to use this instead. And the reason is most of our faces are red, and therefore it'll be a greater distinction between human skin, which will show up more uh, as hotter, like a thermal camera, and then you'll have everything else darker. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it on luminance just for now. Alright, so to see how this effect properly works, we're going to go into the cycle here to adjust the actual colors and how our cycle looks. Opening it up, you can see we've got a bunch of colors. If you go into cycle preset, you can see that there are already a bunch of gradients which are kind of preset for us. For example, hue cycle goes through the whole Roy Gibbiv rainbow color cycle. Or you can do something like um, gradient gray, and I'll just show you what that does. That creates two colors, and it just basically turns it black and white. To show you how this works, if you go into color one and open it, and then open up color two as well, you can see we've got black and white. And the face here shows that at zero degrees, basically at the very bottom end of the color spectrum, of the luminance spectrum, I should say, it'll set everything to be black. And at the top, 359.9, everything will be white. So it's basically kind of converting it to black and white. But of course, if you go into hue cycle, you can see we've got lots more colors. And yeah, it changes it quite a bit. But anyway, we're going to probably want to create our own custom color cycle. So I'm just going to right click and reset this effect. And I'm just going to go into the number of colors we want. And because I'm going to create my custom color cycle, I'm actually going to make it from the Iridescence album art. So I'm just going to drag that onto a new video layer so that we kind of have that here as reference. And I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. And we want to have, let's see how many colors here. We've got a dark blue here. That's one, two for the cyan, three green, four yellow, five orange, six pink, and then seven white. So that's seven colors in total. We're going to be actually now doing our seven colors like so. 
And then we're going to have to work out a bit of maths. There's a little bit of maths involved here. And the reason for that is because we have a different phase for each of these colors. And it doesn't really set it automatically. As you can see, this one's at zero, then this one's all the way at 180, this one's at 90. It kind of fills them in like awkwardly. So we're just gonna do some really quick maths, really quick maths um, to take a look at where we're gonna put each of these colors. So I've got my calculator open, as you can see. We've got seven colors here, but we actually need to create six segments. And the reason is because our seventh color is basically gonna be at 359.999. It's gonna be at 360 basically. And so we only need to create six divisions or segments in our clip. And so all you have to do is just go 360. And because we've got seven colors here, we're gonna divide it by one less than that. So six. And we're going to have everything at roughly 60. So I'm just gonna go into the phase here. Make sure this is the first one's gonna be zero degrees. Next one's gonna be 60. Then add 60 every time. We're gonna go 120, 180. You get the message, whoop, actually, <laughs> gotta go color four first. So 180 here, then 240, down to color six, we've got 300. And then color seven would be 360, but because we're gonna make it just underneath the first one, we're just gonna go 359.9, put as many nines in there as you want. We've got 359.9 for the last color. Now it's a simple case of dragging our colors to the clip here. You can set custom colors by clicking on it like so, or because we've got our color palette just lined up here for us really neatly on the album art, we, what we can do is we can just drag the eyedropper to the color we want. The first one's gonna be that navy blue. Our second one's gonna be this cyan. Our third one, it's gonna be this green here. Let's hide this second video layer and see what we've got. This looks pretty different to our mod. So there's a couple of things we can do to fix this. I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually just going to lower these values here a bit at the top. You can see that um, these pink white values make up really half of it and it only goes up to around 240 here. So I'm just gonna go 200 on the orange and then I'm gonna go maybe 250 like so and 340 like so. Whoop, 340, not 240, 340. Next thing I'm going to do is we're actually just going to adjust the levels of this clip right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drag the levels histogram on, like so. And we're going to do this before the color cycle. That way we're adjusting what the clip looks like before the color cycle effect is applied. You can uncheck the color cycle effect if you want to see what's happening to your original clip. I'm just going to crush the shadows a little bit and I'm actually going to crush the whites a lot because we want that skin to be really nice and bright. If we go back into our color cycle, we see we have more of that pink skin now. And our skies also turn pink, but don't worry, we're going to fix that up right now as well. So how are we going to fix this? Well, we're going to try to adjust the luminance value of each of these colors so that we can basically set a custom thermal color for our colors. <laughs> Might be a bit confusing but let's do that right now. So let's grab the hue saturation lightness effect and drag it on after our levels histogram, but again, before our color cycle. If we just open it up here, and let's just hide the color cycle real quick. We want the sky, which is kind of like our background, to be that deep blue color, which is at the very base of our color cycle. So what we can do is we can go into our cyans and our blues, and we can just adjust the lightness like so. Now, not much of the sky is cyan, as you can see, it's gonna be mostly blue. So just darken the sky until it's really, really blue. And this looks really black at the moment, but if we turn our color cycle on, magically we've got that blue background. Of course, it looks completely awful when you have the color cycle off, but because our color cycles are gonna be over the top of it anyway, you won't be able to notice that much. Now, of course, that does mean we get darkening of things like the uh, the, the shorts here, or the, the pants here, but there's not too much you can do about that. What you can also do is go into the red, for example, and increase the lightness, like so. Now, actually, I'm gonna set this back to 359.99. I don't know why I changed that, so you shouldn't have changed that, but there we go, set it back to 359.99, and 
and then you can adjust the red and the lighter it gets, the more of this will have. And in the yellow, I might even lower the brightness of the yellow a little bit. I don't know, you can mess around with this to get the desired effect that you want. Anyway, that does it for today's video. A quick, well not a quick and easy, but an effective way to convert your footage into this thermal camera looking footage. Of course, won't ever be as good as real thermal camera because we can't just detect the heat from the video, but you can use the colors and you can adjust certain art parts of your video to create that really nice thermal camera look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to click the like button so that other people can find it and of course share it manually. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to watch more hit film tutorials, learn more tricks and uh, other video editing tutorials as well. You can also follow me on Twitter and I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.